Yeah, this is Polly, and about a year ago, I was going through a lot of circumstances in my life and situations, and this video is about um, is about those situations, and it's about um, just showing you my experience of showing people that you can see true innocence in anybody, no matter what the situation could be. Yeah, it was like I don't have to change for anything or anybody. God accepts me just the way I am. And that's what it came down to was just pure acceptance of who I am. And like whatever, whatever, like the ego would judge the situation a certain way. And um, David just took it like God would. He just, or Jesus, he just, just allowed it. He just was like, I don't see anything going on. I just see perfect innocence, basically. I don't see what these other people are seeing. And so for me, that was kind of like, that was just like, yeah, it just felt like really like, like everything, like I'm okay, I'm accepted. It felt like I felt like, yeah, I felt good about being, feeling accepted. Yeah, it, it just came to me this morning about because um, I remember I was in China and I was reading some email about where you were saying, you know, that one of your greatest fears was that somehow your the past or whatever would get exposed in the town or in the community and all the your friends and people that you love and you're sharing with and everything it would you know be it would be something that would be very difficult to to face and live with, and that's just exactly how this journey works. Anything, the mind is so powerful, but there's anything at all that you fear and keep like as a hidden fear, then you come to a session like the one we did the other day, with all that tears and love and joy and everything, and then you walk out the door and the Holy Spirit's like, okay, that's the lesson, now we'll, we'll put it into practice and, and see how well you can Continue it in an experience because it has to be continuous if it's real. Mm -hmm. God doesn't, it's not like a light switch where you, you turn it on and then the first time somebody comes up and does a Google search or throws, tries to throw some darkness or shame, you know, the first time that happens, then it's like, you know, if it was a light switch, then God wouldn't be very strong, you know, if you had to recoil and, and try to explain yourself and even have to explain yourself about the past. Cause mm -hmm. You know, the past is gone, and that's what we're teaching. So so then it gets interesting. I mean, I've had a lot of things happen like this in my life where, you know, the, some kind of a voice from the past comes up and tries to point an accusing finger or says, we're afraid of you or so forth. And I've had a lot of people tell me that they're afraid of me and everything like this. And I'm like, well, there's no need to be. You know, it's like there's nothing to be afraid of. And that's been the whole joy of the teaching. So so my feeling has been like with friendships and relationships and this and this, if if accusations or thoughts from the past come up and people are quick to turn um, around from loving and welcoming and supportive to fearful and doubting and questioning and everything, then, you know, like in sports terms, you know, we, we would we call people fair weather fans if they only root for the team when the team's doing good. You know, it's like and bandwagon. Bandwagon. You know, they just jump on the bandwagon when the team's going good and then when the team's going bad they they sling all their criticisms and they don't like this and I don't like that and I'm not gonna go to the games and I wouldn't pay a dime. And it's the same with friendships, you know, it's like if you have relationships and friendships and, and stuff comes up from the past, you know, the ones that are true friends or that really love you are the ones that, that see your innocence and not ones that, that make the past real. Because all this talk about God and love and Jesus, what, what does it count if, if, you have it, if people are still seeing in darkness? So, you know, one thing you might have noticed about this planet is that there's, there's like now over seven billion people and that's Seven billion people is just a mask over one mind that's really terrified. So people are calling out for love every day because they're really frightened. They, they forgot who they are, they don't know where they are, they've tried to distract themselves with the world and deep down they're real shaky about their identity. So 
So that's where all this, uh, you know, fear of doubt and the past comes up and where people get all bent out of shape over things. But, um, you know, I said, if, if you, it comes to the point where something, whatever it was from the past, gets exposed and shared in the town, and the town rejects you, you know, I was saying this morning, I was saying, my cat is more loving than that. Mm -hmm. if, that if a whole town rejects you, then my cat is more loving, has a more pure heart than the whole town. Or if, if numbers of people, whoever, would seem to deny or reject somebody, you know, I, my cat has got more love than that. You know, it's, it's really coming down to true forgiveness, is really seeing the innocence. And that's what this is about. So, you know, my feeling is that you know you you and you've taken a lot of steps since you've come, and we were talking about those the other day at at the service. And you're just continuing on to take your steps. And if anyone has any questions, you can you can just tell them. Let the spirit put the words in your mouth. Here's how it was. I, I was lost in my life. I ended up in prison and actually it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me because I got to face my thoughts and emotions in a place where I didn't have to put a lot of thought to other things. I got a chance, I was, I, I had a chance, I couldn't even get out for early parole because I didn't really have a place to go but I, I did my inner work and I'm out and I'm, I'm changed, I'm restored, I'm, I'm here to shine love and light and I'm not a prisoner to the past and you know if anybody has a problem with that then you know if if a, a boss or a co-worker or a, uh, somebody in the barbershop or somebody on the street or somebody neighbor or anybody has a problem with it all they are is an opportunity to witness to the present love of God that's it they don't have any other they don't serve any other purpose other than as an opportunity to witness to God's love and then the trust comes in is, will I be cared for? Will I, you know, be taken care of? Well, you're, you know, you've got a lot of love to shine and that's a very high calling. And so, you know, the things that the world is so concerned about, a place to live and food and income and all this and that, I mean, even a bank account, you know, it's like the things that seem to be the most important things, you know, are not that essential, you know, they're, the people like Peace Pilgrim who went around just walking around, shining the light, without a bank account, without a car, without insurance, without you know a mortgage, without all the trappings and the things that people think are so important. And she was quite content, you know, to do that. And I was looking at my cat today, and I was thinking, just so happy and content. Mm -hmm. You know, a warm bed or chair to lie on, a carpet, a some food every once in a while, some snuggles, and she likes to go and <coughs> be affectionate with, it doesn't matter if it's people or chair legs or, or whatever, animate, inanimate, just a very happy, content life, and a very simple life. And, and is not thinking about her past, you know, of her sister and how her and her sister used to fight occasionally. It's been years, she has no thought of her sister Angel anymore, mm -hmm. and she has no thought of where she used to live. She doesn't wake up in the morning and reminisce about what, where she's been, what she's done. She doesn't think about what she's going to do today or tomorrow. Uh, she doesn't think about, you know, where to go or travel or there's just the mind is emptied of those things. I was saying we actually here at the Metaphysical Center, we actually, you probably noticed out by, as you go to the hot tub, there's a little door. It was a rabbit door. Mm -hmm. But I swear that door is perfect size for tripod, but she's never been through that door. She has no need to go outside. She could. Mm -hmm. There's nothing holding her back, but she has no need for it. In fact, she rarely comes out of her, her room. Her world is about the size of that room, and occasionally, very rarely, will she come hop down a, a hall like a bunny rabbit, but she has no need to go through doors. She has no need to go out, because she's content, and just content in the love, and it's a state of mind, it's a state of being. And then you look at the world with all of its 
illusions of attack and 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 victimization and all this stuff about mistreatment and abuse and on and on and on and on and it's really much to do about nothing it's it's just to even give one ounce of faith to to that it just it doesn't make you happy so you know it's basically you just have to to be the the true you be the real you and trust that you know the chips can fall however they may you don't really care you know, the, the chips can stack up, the chips can be knocked over, the chips can be spread far and wide, it doesn't really affect you. You know, you're there and, and if you're shining the love of God and, and somebody even fires you or says you've got to, you know, that's like the old days of the Wild West, got to get out of Dodge, got to leave town. Well, you know, if the Holy Spirit would have you leave town, it would be towards the next step in your mission of shining the light of God. It's not because nobody can force you to do anything. You know, if God is with you, no one can be against you. And that's the most important thing to remember. You know, if you are unable to work for any reason, for whatever, opinions of the world, then, you know, you're part of this ministry and we know your the devotion of your heart and you were happy and content in the canyon you know at the monastery and you were content at helping out a masterpiece you've been content you know just to be where you could be of service and that's the most important thing is to be content you know and to trust that the spirit will take care of, of everything and it's not like you have like two hundred thousand dollar mortgage and and thousands of dollars of child support payments and you've got you owe this drug lord and that drug lord and there's people mafia coming after you for your life because of you know you stole someone's girlfriend or you you didn't pay back the million dollars that that you somehow got you know there's none there's nothing really going on it's like you got a really a pretty simple life where you've made a big turnaround in your life and you let go of whatever that seemed to be in the past including all the labels, you know, it's like whatever, you know, that's what medicine, psychiatry, social work, you know, all, cri all these criminology, you know, all these different labels of labeling human being for what they seem to have done right or wrong and, and then holding them to it, like it's a label that, that the world tries to stick to you. But you have to be, you know, so fluent and so fluid in the spirit that, that nothing sticks. You know, they're just words. Mm -hmm. They called Jesus a lot of names. There was a lot of names there, but they didn't stick because there was nothing to stick to. And that's what you're, you're about. You know, you're, you're about innocence. You're about extending innocence to everyone you meet. And, you know, and if somebody, you know, seems to say, well, if you're so innocent, then why did this happened, or why did you do this and this, and how can you be a, a man of God or a child of God if you're blah, 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 then it's like, that's just another opportunity to sit down and say, yeah, let's, let's talk about forgiveness. Let's talk about real forgiveness. You know, what, what it really means, not just as a concept that talk about a couple of days a week, but I mean really living it, really applying it, and extending it, you know. It's beautiful. We live out in an area of the country where the, the church out here, the, one of the predominant churches is called the Church of Latter-day Saints. Latter-day Saints. How beautiful. How beautiful to even believe in Latter-day Saints, that they weren't all back in the, this, the second century or the fourth century or the twelfth century and there's none left. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all used up over time <laughs> in the history books. But Latter-day Saints, you know, that just means it's a beautiful reflection that, that to live a saintly life and shine the light in this day and age in the modern contemporary world is, is not only possible, but it's, it's inevitable, it's the calling. We've got a meetup group that we have uh, on, on the internet and basically we have, it instead of having so many, it's got a hundred, instead of saying members, it says a hundred saints in training that's what it says there's a hundred saints in training and that's you know what you're you are you're a saint in training and you're 
learning to let go of the past and, and live in God's love and trust in the present moment. There's no higher calling. So I think the thing about it too is when you are tempted, when darkness arises and your darkest fears come up, you know, that's when it's most important to turn to me or turn to the community and say, I got some darkness coming up here and I just need to have somebody just join with me to hold the light to hand this over to the Holy Spirit and not, the ego wants you to take it serious, you know, like it's a serious problem and there's going to be serious consequences and that's just, it's trick. Mm -hmm. It just wants you to buy into it and we just want you to join in the truth of who you really are and not to forget that because it, it's fun to be who you are. Mm -hmm. It really is joyful. So, I just feel honored that you're part of us and and I think you can know that, you know, we have all kinds of sayings in, in the English language. One of them is, I um, used to hear this when I was growing up, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Meaning, uh, if, if your friends aren't reflecting back love and, and happiness and joy and support, then they were never true friends at all. They were tricks mm -hmm. of the imposter. You know, they were masquerading as friends, but they, they weren't friends. I mean, what's the definition of a friend? A friend's a friend forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never, because the friendship will not end. You know, true love is, it just has to be constant. And, you know, if, if it turns to hatred, like that movie we were watching last night, that Jason prepared for us where it was all this love, love, and then all of a sudden it turned to this vicious hatred. If anything can turn to something that's not love, then that just means it wasn't love at all. It was just a trick, because love doesn't change. Love, love never ends. Love doesn't change and put on a, an accusing mask, or it doesn't deviate from itself only to try to find its way back. You know, love is, is constant. And that's what you deserve, too. You're, you're just learning to, to, to call forth the witnesses of love and, and support in this world like everyone is. And, and if, you, if you find that you're not welcome or you're not accepted, you know, Jesus had a beautiful saying for that when he was sent the apostles out to go shine the light of the kingdom of heaven. He said, you know, if you're taken in in these towns where you go, then abide there. And if you're not, he said, brush off your sandals and, and move on. You know, he, he wasn't saying, don't try to negotiate, don't try to convince, don't try to say, no, no, it's not that way at all, this and this, just if you're not welcome, then brush off your sandals and, and move on. And I know in my life, I've had to brush my sandals off a lot until they finally fell off. I had to get some new <laughs> shoes. I've been brushing my sandals off so many times. It can be with friends, with course groups, it can be with Christians and Hindus, Muslims, it can be with people that are, are atheists or with, that claim they're believers or whatever. Hey, when the welcome ends, that's all right with me. The Holy Spirit's with me and I'm, I'm going my way to shine my light and I have no problem brushing off my sandals. You know, it's like if Jesus told me to do it, I'm, I'm ready, you know. You know, if somebody says, you know, you're not welcome here, and that's, these boots are made for walking. <laughs> and that's what, just what they'll do, and, and it's going to walk away from anything that's not the truth. You know, because the only purpose that the boots have are to help us be messengers of truth and love and light, and to go shine the light. We, we're, we're here to share, shine the good news, to share the good news, and that's the only purpose that our feet have in our shoes. And if, if we find that, that it's never welcome or whatever, well, listen, we've got nobody to convince. It's always our own soul that's, that's remembering who it is. It's not trying to convince other people. We're not trying to convert anybody. We're not trying to change anybody's mind. We're not trying to say we have the truth and you don't. We're not trying to say that this truth is better than that truth, or this belief is better than that belief, you know, none of it really. It's, it's simply a state of mind, and it needs nothing. 
you know, it's already everything. So it doesn't need, I mean, love is so glorious, it doesn't even need to be believed in. It's that glorious. You don't even have to believe in it. It's still love. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh no, no, I don't believe in love. You know, like that song, I'm not in love, so don't forget it. You know, love is like, ha, ha. You know, it doesn't need belief to be what it is. So it's absolutely belong, beyond belief. And, and today, I mean, I was thinking how this love is so beyond persons and personalities and, and everything of this world that, um, that I got these four words in a row this morning when I woke up, and it's, to the world it's radical, but to me it was like the most beautiful thing that could ever be. And it was transcending the whole concept of persons and saints and avatars and awakened beings and everything. The four words were, no, can, K-N-O-W, no, Jesus. And the second two words were, N-O, Jesus. No Jesus. No Jesus. I was like, wow, that's cool. No Jesus. No Jesus. <laughs> it was just a beautiful thing. You know, it's not something that maybe Christians that are identified with a man or a history or the past or whatever, maybe they don't appreciate it as much as me. But I was tickled. <laughs> no Jesus. Know Jesus, because to know God, to know the real Jesus, to know the Christ idea, is to go beyond the form of a man. The Christ isn't not a man or a woman or masculine or feminine. The Christ is eternal, and it's in the course. There's a couple places where Jesus says, "Forgive me your illusions," and people have always said when I go around the country and the world, they say, I don't, I don't get that part. I, th I was starting to get the Course, but that one freaks me. You know, like, why do I have to forgive Jesus for anything? Why Jesus? And it's all it's saying is, accept yourself as the living Christ. And to do that, you have to let go of all of history. You've got to let go of it all. Like the Buddha said, empty your mind of everything and just know your divinity and your, your innocence. Who to call it the void, but when when you are de when you have, are devoid of the world and what's left, it's pretty glorious. He didn't even have to. Get, Buddha didn't give a word to it, and Jesus, you know, called that God, you know, Hapa Father. But it doesn't matter what it's called or not called; it's the same. So I think you can just go forth. I mean, I think this was saying that today's like an off day, so. You know, you don't have to go into work today. And then it's like you just follow your prompts mm -hmm. day by day. If you if you wake up and, and there's a day to go to work and you go to work, it's like all you do is you hand the day over to the Holy Spirit and say, Okay, this day is for the glory of God and whatever happens I will not you know, I will not be discouraged by anything. I will go shine my light and and then, uh, and you really get a chance to, to really watch your mind and watch the reflections. I know Helena told me one time that she was here visiting as an exchange student, and then she was working at different jobs. And there was one job she worked at where she just had this feeling of feeling like she wasn't a body and that she was she had been a fake and everything and so she did some it was like a, I think it was involving computers and technology and it was a pretty kind of business like atmosphere and everything and she one day she just shaved all of her hair off of her head and got a tattoo which side I think it was maybe the left side of her head a tattoo that had a very meaningful word about about purpose and love and God and I forget what the word was and everything, but she went into her 
her job with the bald head and a tattoo. And she said, it was an amazing experience because she said, going in, I, I thought I knew who my friends were, who would go, oh, mm -hmm. that's sweet, and I love you, and give her a hug, and which ones would step back in judgment. And she said the best part of the whole experience was, it was nothing like what she thought. The ones she thought would be the friends weren't. <laughs> and the ones that she thought were sure would judge her, they accepted her. And so she was like, whoa, that's humbling to think that I could be so mistaken. If we just don't know. We do know that, that love goes with us and that we are divine and we are innocent in our heart and we just don't know what witnesses will be called forth. But we can be assured that whatever witnesses come are coming from our mind. So if we still have doubts about our divinity and our identity, then oh, the world will definitely act it out. And if we don't have any doubt, then we will pay no heed to appearances. You know, we will be resting and shining in our certainty, and it won't matter uh, what the witnesses seem to say and do, because we'll, we'll be sure of what's true in our heart. And when we have doubt about what's in our heart, we have doubt about our identity. The world is really good at, at bringing forth witnesses to, to whatever we hold on our heart chamber. But all we can say is hallelujah, it's all part of the purification, you know. Show me, show me what I believe, show me what's on my heart. Help me be purged of, of anything that's not of God, you know. Help me be free. Help me know my, myself as a child of God, and, and oh man, is it a speed up? When you, when that's the prayer of your heart. It's like, get ready, you know, because it's 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 just saying that you you want to to know the truth, and you won't settle for illusions. And I know that's what's on your heart. That's you didn't come all this way, you know, to to shrink back, you know, to let shame you know, have, be your prison anymore, you know, you're not deserving of any kind of shame, you're deserving of love. So, I know you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> Spirit's got your back. Yeah. Together, we will show the world <laughs> what this is all about. We are very deeply joined in this. Thank you. <laughs> healing the multitudes. <laughs> yeah, just healing in action. Just yeah. Healing in action. Yeah. It's practical healing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got this morning. I thought, oh, see Polly. So. <laughs> Glad we could have this meeting. Me too. Like this, yeah. Because I just had so much stuff coming up about the whole thing, and you know, it's like, oh God, now I know 
Well, I'm gonna have to leave with that whole deal, you know. All this for nothing, you know. Yeah, I know that was always in my life a, a thing that was hanging over me. There were times where I thought, oh, now oh, I have to leave. And I finally got to the point where it was like, I just want to serve God. You know, I don't really care, you know, how it looks or if it's here or there or whatever. I just want to be happy and serve God. And then the thought of, you know, it's like just follow the invitations and go where I'm welcome, you know. I thought, what a simple solution, you know, go where I'm welcome and follow the invitations. I thought, I can do that. I mean, that sounded really simple. You know, just follow the invitations. Where there's a welcome and there's an open door, all I have to do is step through it, you know. That that was really simple. I guess the fear I had was is that, that the past had shown me that there were a lot of closed doors and, and nowhere to go. And so that's why I was afraid at the beginning. But then I thought, no, actually I have had some beautiful open doors and invitations. And I said, I'm, I'm going to actually follow those invitations and and trust that guidance and see where it takes me. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I'll go anywhere in the world. I, I, don't, I just want to be happy. So I just kind of stepped through those doors of invitations. And then um, I did it so much that I thought, this works. So I started telling other people. I remember Carrie's over there behind us uh, in another room and, and she came to me one time and she was she was confused and frightened and didn't know where to go and what to do. And I said, it's just real simple, just follow the invitations. And she said, but I, I don't have any invitations. And she said, you have lots of invitations. You've got no problem to follow the invitations because you've got lots of invitations, but I don't have any. And I said, no, it's not that way. I said, I said, you actually do have invitations and you have many, 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 many more. And so it works for you just like it works for me. It works for all of us. But we just, somehow we just didn't know that. Mm -hmm. We just thought that we had to figure it out on our own or whatever, but it was so obvious to just be able to follow the invitations. And so, and it was a while went by and I think Carrie came to me, I don't know if it was years later, and she just remembered that and she smiled and she said, you know, you were right that, that I had an invitation and there were invitations and it's still happening. You know, she just, went through a 10-day a intensive workshop in California and it was very humbling and she said, I don't know who I am and where to go and what to do, but, but she had an invitation to come here and so she came and she's got an invitation to go to Canada and she's still riding the wave, you know, all these years later. And you mentioned her in, uh, in your handwritten letter that you wrote from prison, how, mm -hmm. you know, you saw her when she was in her dark days, and then you saw her when, when she was in light, and you, that was a powerful witness for you, and here it is, all these years later, you're here, she's here, you're taking your next step, she's taking your next step, you had some darkness and shame coming up, she's had some darkness and shame's coming up, here we are all these years later, and it's, it's still the Holy Spirit working and bringing this great healing about and and yet you have followed the invitations you know when you were in prison you did feel an invitation to come here mm -hmm. and it was a genuine invitation and it's it's an invitation that's open open ended you know it's not there's never you know you have to go out or you have to do this i know you talked to lisa the other day and she said you were saying did i do something wrong and it's like no you've you've actually done everything right uh, by stepping up and following the invitation and being willing and, and serving and, and questioning ego beliefs and you've done all the right things and MMT and everything but it, it's like the next step may very well be you know to, to be out in the house and so on and so forth maybe or you know if the town would try to do this scarlet letter you know, Nathaniel Hawthorne thing on you and try to pin you with a G letter, not for God, but guilt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you know, and, and whatever, then, you know, then that's like, well, 
you know, I, I don't need that. You know, you even in the in the book and the movie Scarlet Letter, Demi Moore played the the character that got pinned with this it looked like an A or something. It was this thing about her sin pinned. She had to wear <coughs> this thing on her all around the town and people would throw stuff at her and she was scorned by the whole town and she just had to be pelted and pelted and pelted. And admittedly she was she wouldn't say who had got her pregnant so they were furious that she was holding a secret and they were going to throw eggs at her and whatever else you know to make her pay and be punished for her secret but the best thing about it is you don't really have a secret you know you don't have a secret the only thing you've got in your heart to t tell this world is that God is real love is real if they want to call that a secret, then okay, you've got a secret, but you're happy to let the secret out, the cat out of the bag. But you don't have a secret, really. You don't have anything, really, to kept, keep hidden. And I think that was part of her lesson, too, that she didn't really have to hide anything. She thought she did. Mm -hmm. She thought that basically, in a scarlet letter that Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote, she thought that if she told the identity of the man that got her pregnant, that they would kill him. And so she thought she would protect him by keeping this secret. But you know what? It was just another private thought. All she had to do was trust God and expose the private thought. And that's what all of us are doing. We, we may think we've got some thoughts down there that are so shameful and so guilty that we can't tell anybody. But try it on with the Holy Spirit, you know. Holy Spirit, it's like saying, give it to me. Give me those thoughts, I'll show you your innocence. And the world is saying, oh no, you better hide certain things. And if they get exposed, then you're through. You'll lose everything. You'll lose your prestige. You'll lose your status. You'll lose your image. Yeah, good. Let all those things be lost. You know? Christ didn't have pride. Christ had no status. Christ had no image. Christ had no job. Christ was pure love and light and pure innocence and that's all the message was. Forgive and be forgiven. You know, be ye perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect. He had a happy message to share and he was sharing that, that God is real and it is no secret anymore. And that's the same function you have. So you have no secret. Mm -hmm. you, you know, even in the Scarlet Letter, she, the only reason she had to put up with all this stuff getting thrown all over her face and thrown at her all the time wherever she'd go and people s screaming at her and yelling at her and calling her a witch and a sinner and everything was... Yeah, she still believed she had to protect the identity of a man. What a silly idea. All for the identity of a man. It's a lot to go through. You know? And then if, they, if the people seem to kill the man, then the man gets killed, but what does that do to the spirit, you know? You can't kill the spirit. If we line up with God, then oh, it's a pretty easy life. You're not so concerned about image and this and this. Christ, to, towards the end of his life, with Jesus' life, didn't have many friends. Even the apostles, you know, turned, Peter turned away, denied him, the Bible three times in your ancient book, it was four times. I always thought three, but now four. Oh man, four <laughs> times to deny Jesus. But Jesus wasn't offended because he wasn't a body. No Jesus. K N O W. Jesus. No Jesus. That's why Peter could say, I know this man not. I've never seen this man before. Four times publicly just to deny that he had any association with Jesus. And Jesus wasn't offended. No Jesus, no Jesus. He wasn't like, my God, I worked with you for three years. Spent three years of my life and you're living with me and now the first chance you get you deny that you've ever known me. And then you do it again and again and again. No, Jesus didn't have those thoughts in his mind. He, he knew no Peter, no the real Peter, the, the Christ Peter, no, Peter. 
he knew that the personalities weren't real, none of them were real in this world. So he, he, he didn't hold anything against anybody. He knew the body wasn't real, even with, with spikes going through you know, the arms and legs. Mm -hmm. Wasn't identified with the body. Wasn't, wasn't pissed off. Wasn't angry at the, even the ones that were driving the nails through. No. Not a body. He didn't identify. He didn't have any guilt in his mind. He didn't identify with the body. So this is, these are profound teachings. And what an honor it is for us to be able to teach and demonstrate them and really have the experience for ourselves. That's the most important thing. Not the words or the concepts. We got nothing to, nobody to teach, nobody to preach to, but, but these ideas are worthy of us experiencing them because we deserve innocence. We deserve love and happiness. And this is your function, you know. So you can go forth, you know, with knowing that whatever the world says and does can't touch you. It can touch me not. And if the world comes back at you like the scarlet letter and says, ah, what about your past? What about can you explain yourself? What about this and this and this? Just let the Holy Spirit remind you, the past is over, it can touch me not. The past is over, it can touch me not. And if people don't understand that, they say, I don't understand that. Just say, well, I'm not who I was. I'm who I am. And I'm really learning to love that about myself. I'm not who I was. Don't, don't hold the past against me. I'm not going to hold the past against you and, and let's, let's make a a joining here to to see and experience the love and the innocence and to not hold on to the past. And if people say, well, you did this and this and this and this, you say, you know, I'm not proud of, of certain actions, but I'm, I'm not condoning certain types of behavior, but I am born again. I am, am living in God's love, that's what counts. That's what counts, not what seemed to happen in the past. Because everybody is the same thing. If anybody gives any reality to the past and behaviors and so forth, they're going to feel guilty. They're not going to be happy. It's the same for everyone. It's not just you. You're not like a special case. You, you say, I'm, not, I'm a special case here. My innocence is everyone's innocence. You remember that a while back when Lisa was in Cincinnati and she came up to Pennsylvania and you joined her for, to go to the, <coughs> the trial of Freeman May. And, you know, there were people in that courtroom that wanted him to fry. Mm -hmm. They wanted him dead. They wanted him punished for what he seemed to do. And you were able to be there and be part of a witness and an experience not to condone any kind of behavior and this and this, but there to watch the witness and the testimony to, to innocence. You've been through that before. You've mm -hmm. seen the power of that. The power of innocence is, is the greatest thing that there is. There's nothing in this world that's even close to the power of innocence. And so, what a gift, you know. That was, you got to participate in that. Lisa came to me and to Jason, come with me, come with me. <laughs> No, I don't think I'm called to do that, but you were, and you got to, to witness the glory. As our friend John Crowder says, the glory! You got to go in that courtroom and witness the glory of God, innocence, regardless of what the testimony was, regardless of what the outcome was, regardless of what the prosecuting attorney and the people said, you got to witness to the glory. In fact, you know, that, I, we got to hear the story of the glory when she came back of, is it true, Miss Fair, or Miss Stern, what was it back then, whatever, Miss Fair, Miss Fair that you study A Course in Miracles? <laughs> yes, it is. And is it true that this book teaches that you can be hurt by nothing but your thoughts? Yes, it is. And I'm here to teach the the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. And 
we're not condoning behaviors, but we're saying in Christ's eyes, innocence is real and true. That's what we're here to teach. And so you've been through this. You're, this is old hat for you. you. You've already been through all of that. Somebody on death row, somebody who's accused by the world, the world's bringing all of its evidence, saying, fry him, fry him, and you got to witness in the most extreme cases the power of God's love. This stuff is it's old hat. You've been through it. It's not like you're you're brand new to it. You've you've actually walked through the fire and been able to watch others, you know, walk through the fire and come come into that innocence. So, you know, you can learn a lot from those experiences with Freeman May, because now here it is years later, and it's like, huh? So here I am. I get my shot too. <laughs> you know. So it's beautiful. We always love those parables. <laughs> they never get old. Get some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> we got some great ones. We don't have to sit down and try. Let's write a parable out. Wow. We just by living this path, we got a whole boatload full of parables. And then it's great, you know, because when people seem to get pressed into extreme circumstances, then here come the parables to say, Oh yeah, that's right. I've already walked through this. I've already, got, I've already walked this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to shrink back from anything. I can walk in the glory. <laughs> <laughs> it's that stuff. Feeling better? Yeah, I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot better. <laughs> That's good. Yep, you can go about your day in innocence, mm -hmm. resting in your innocence. You've always got a job with us. Yeah, that's it. God, God needs you for, for the task of, of sharing the good news of forgiveness. That's your job. You can't lose that job. You know, God's not going to go out. I heard a rumor about you. I'm taking away your your job. God doesn't believe in rumors. God knows the truth of you. So, so you can't really lose your job, except when you so completely fulfill your job of shining the good news, that at some point you're like, huh, I'm it. <laughs> I am the good. <laughs> then you're then you're really out of a job. <laughs> you've lost you've lost your your Holy Spirit job <laughs> in that case. And hallelujah, glory to God for the end of that job too. <laughs> People think I'm crazy doing what I'm doing. Well, I tell them there's no problems, only solutions. Well, they shake their head and look at me as if i lost my mind. Tell them there's no worries, no hurries. I'm just sitting here doing time. <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I really love to watch them roll. No longer riding on the merry-go-round. <laughs> I just had to let it go. Dun, 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 dun. I just had to let go. I just had to let it go. <laughs> go, John. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's a wrap. That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah.